Hi all, Mrs. Arndt here. I know how much you liked that Seth Ponder video when he had the webcam in the corner, so I thought I'd bring you this little treat today. Uh, so one thing that I do want to show you is that concrete wall problem, dealing with the center of gravity and finding out how far it is from your tipping, uh, tipping point. Uh, so go ahead and open up Inventor and open a part file. When you create your new sketch, I would encourage you to put it on the XY plane. It'll make it a little bit easier. When you're in your sketch, uh, you might notice that I have this X, Y, Z um, axes pointers showing me which way each axis is. If that's something that you want to include, go up to your tools and choose the application options from the ribbon. And in the sketch tab, make sure that the coordinate system indicator is checkmarked. That'll show you those X, Y, Z indicators. When you're creating this particular sketch, one thing you want to make sure you do is anchor the bottom left point of the entire sketch right on the axis, uh, excuse me, right on the origin. So I'm not going to create the same part that you're making. Um, I do want to make something kind of interesting with a fun center of gravity. Um, make sure you dimension your entire sketch. Make sure it's fully constrained. And one thing to notice is that our inventor part file is in inches and our uh, the dimension drawing is in feet. So if you're trying to make something six feet, you could either label it uh, six feet, or you could take six times 12 uh, to put it in a number of inches. So I'll leave that up to you, how you want to make that work. Uh, if I want to make my top seven, seven feet, I'll take seven times 12 to get the large number of inches in there. So finish dimensioning everything that you're planning to dimension, make sure it's fully constrained, and make sure the bottom left uh, point of your sketch is right on the origin. All right, now, when you're planning to extrude, uh, what I don't want is to completely take this sketch away from that origin point. I want it to extrude around that origin point symmetrically. So let's choose the symmetric and then uh, tell it how far to extrude in total. Uh, if you want it to be 10 feet, 10 times 12, and what it does is it extrudes evenly. So 5 feet are on one side, 5 feet on the other. So 10 feet total is what I wanted to extrude there. All right, so I have this crazy part with this overhang, and I'm kind of curious about the center of gravity. Um, so what I'm going to do now is right click on my part name at the top of the browser bar, open up the I properties, and under physical, be sure to click update. Okay. Don't pay attention to my mass because at this point this is not made of the concrete, um, so you'll want to make sure you choose that, uh, that material before you go into I properties. The center of gravity that it's talking about here um, is telling me how far it is in each uh, dimensional direction. So the X direction, the 31.091 inches, um, that's the perpendicular distance from that tipping point, the origin of my sketch, um, perpendicular to my center of gravity where the weight is pressing down. The Y center of gravity uh, is the vertical distance from that tipping point um, and that's not the one that we want. So if you're on the XY plane, the X is the number of inches you want for your perpendicular distance. So that's the scoop on center of gravity. Um, I know that doesn't necessarily show you or tell you where it is, aside from giving you the measurement that you need. So if you want to physically see it, where it would be on your part, um, one thing that you can do, aside from placing a specific point, is to go into your, not tools, uh, go into view, and choose center of gravity and then it will point out exactly where uh, in your part the center of gravity is located. So that way it gives you a good idea of where the the weight is centered. And that's it.